Okay, let's see if I remember how to do this. So I'm back with a video that actually has a deadline for it, which I actually do uh, better with deadlines and getting stuff done. Uh, I, I think it has something to do with um, my autism and uh, like knowing exactly what to do and when to do it, I, I guess. So I, I can do it much more easily when I have a deadline set by someone else. If it's set by me, then I might not do it uh, before the deadline because, you know, there's no consequences. What am I going to do? Punish myself for not meeting the deadline? So this one has a deadline of election day, which is uh, in two weeks from when I'm filming uh, this video. It's almost over. <laughs> but yeah, so it is going to be a political video, but it ties back into autism. This is a news story that I heard about the Senate election in Pennsylvania. I'm going to read the story off of my phone. And I'm on a website which is appropriate, appropriate, well, okay, appropriate, appropriately, the website is appropriately called Crooks and Liars. The news story goes, a Republican billionaire and U.S. Senate candidate, Dave McCormick, uh, I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, he made a campaign stop outside of Max's Stakes in North Philadelphia. It was an event aimed at reaching out to black voters in Philly. But the McCormick campaign told Max's manager that the event was for autism awareness and not a political fundraising event for Dave McCormick. So they just flat out lied. Yeah, seriously. So the manager at Max's, who is named Mike, Mike, the manager at Max's, okay. But uh, manager Mike, and I'm not even going to try and say his last name. Um, I, because I know I'm just going to butcher it, I'll, I'll just put it on screen. But he told reporters that he was surprised to see campaign signs for McCormick and Donald Trump being hung up outside his restaurant. He said that he had agreed to the event because he was told it was an autism awareness event and uh, his niece and nephew have autism. And he gave a quote to reporters that was, we didn't sign up for that at all. Zero. I could have thrown them all out of here, but I'm going to be nice. Do your thing. When you're done, leave. You're not welcome back. Unquote. And... He banned Dave McCormick from his, the restaurant for life, which, yeah, that, that's great. Hopefully he also banned other people involved uh, in this. So uh, the, the article goes on to say that the event was organized in part by Sheila Armstrong who's a Philadelphia activist of various causes. She has a nonprofit organization called Cooking for Autism. Like one word and the four is number four. 
Mike, the manager, said that Armstrong reached out to him to schedule the event on behalf of her nonprofit organization, Cooking for Autism, and not on behalf of McCormick's campaign. Yeah, she, she lied. There's, there's no other way to put it. She just lied. And she's a member of the controversial conservative group Moms for Liberty, which uh, has come up a lot if you've been following uh, politics in recent years. The, the article does say Armstrong appears to have no official affiliation with McCormick. Weird. But Armstrong said she has offered to be a Lise. See, this, this is what happens when you don't talk a lot. You can't pronounce certain words. She offered to be a Lise. Lise. A Lise. No, that's not. Liaison. I'll just put the word up. Uh, for the Republican campaign in the city. Also, Armstrong was a part of the campaign of, uh, what is it, M Mehmet Oz, Dr. Oz, uh, who had defeated McCormick in the last uh, GOP primary, and then Oz went on to lose to uh, John Fetterman in the general election. Oh, and, and there's one more part to this. So after the uh, autism event slash uh, political uh, campaign event ended, McCormick uh, left. Yeah, he, he went across the street to a Baptist church, which at that time was holding an outdoor fundraiser for its food ministry. The Reverend Thomas Edwards, Jr., who leads the church, told his campaign to leave because he didn't want the candidate to use photos of his congregation for campaigning purposes. Yeah. Uh, the Reverend said, you can use Photoshop. You can make things seem like they aren't. Maybe they're going to post we're eating dogs or eating cats, like in Ohio. Forgive me if I'm wrong. I don't trust these people. End quote. <laughs> so uh, Dave McCormick was kicked out of two places. One right after another. You know, the whole eating dogs and cats, that's also a total, total lie. Yeah, the Trump campaign is spreading the lie about Haitian immigrants eating pets in Springfield, Ohio. But when you said, you know, it's gone viral, they're, they're eating the dogs, they're eating the cats. You say you're just reporting what had been said. But why not say now, well, look, that turned out not to be true. I don't know, if it's, not true. I don't know if it's true or not true. I read you something. The pets, you don't know if it's true or not true. No. It's been debunked by well, the official. Sure. What about the goose? The geese? What about the geese? What happened there? They were yeah. all missing. I there was know. one guy with Howie, two Howie. geese. Howie. I have no idea. I mean, first the lie came from a Facebook post someone posted on uh, a neighborhood group, I think it was. And it was like, I heard that my neighbor's daughter's friend's sister lost her cat and then a Haitian immigrant ate it. I don't know. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Just lies. Absolutely not true. Yeah, and the woman who posted the post, sure, yeah, she later apologized for it and said she was wrong and she shouldn't have done it and she, yeah she regrets doing it but the Trump campaign mostly Trump is still out there lying 
about this, and even said it in the debate. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating, they're eating the pets of the people that live there. And this is what's happening in our country, and it's a shame. I just want to clarify here, you bring up Springfield, uh, Ohio, and, and ABC News did reach out to the city manager there. Uh, he told us there had been no credible reports of specific claims of pets being harmed, injured, or abused by individuals within the immigrant community. So back to the whole fake arm, uh, fake Armstrong, no, <laughs> fake autism awareness event. Sheila Armstrong gave this quote to reporters. She said, quote, it's always autism awareness because I'm an education advocate, unquote. Huh? <laughs> and she said she spoke to those gathered at the cheesesteak cheese restaurant uh, about autism at one point. So, yeah, she mentioned autism to some people at the event once and then a spokesman for the McCormick campaign said we certainly apologize for any confusion like, no there's no confusion it's just lying yeah that's all you can say it's lies and I'm really ticked off about this everyone should be you know because if you replace autism with something else like uh if they said it was a cancer awareness events or you know cancer research event or a domestic violence awareness event or an anti-child sexual exploitation awareness event does that make it any Better or worse, huh? I, w I would say it's still just as bad if you replace autism awareness with something else. Uh, I know there's an old joke in politics that says, how do you know if a politician is lying when they're talking? Which, there's a lot of truth to that with this story and also the dogs and cats being eaten uh, in Ohio story. I, I just hope that there's consequences for this kind of lying. Uh, I hope Dave McCormick loses. I don't live in Pennsylvania. Otherwise, I would have voted against him. Uh, but I hope everyone else does. I mean, people don't even have to vote for his Democrat opponent, they can vote third party uh, just as long as they're not voting for him because he does not deserve any votes uh, because of this. It's just awful that that's what it is. Actually, this election, I am trying to get involved. Yeah, you know, I keep hearing about different volunteer opportunities to do phone baking text baking, but still, I'm not up to communicating with strangers over the phone, so I instead uh, took up postcard writing. Uh, here, here's the postcards. I thought I had requested 20 postcards to write to uh, voters in different states, but instead I got 200, it looks like. Yeah, and I al already got this stack of postcards finished, and th this one, I'm like halfway through. I got, I got this many finished and this more to go. Also, a deadline I have. Uh, I need to get all these finished by the end of this week and then sent out last week of October at the latest. I actually kind of enjoy it. 
I, I guess just because I'm writing the same message over and over again. I, I chose to write about climate change and uh, how I, as a millennial, have never lived through a year with cooler than average temperatures. Uh, and the hottest recorded year is last year, 2023. What, what year is it? <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, yeah, that's all true. And the hottest year before 2023 was 2022, 2021, yeah, so on and so on. Every year it's getting hotter. People aren't talking about it as much as they should. So I decided to write about that and hopefully encourage people to vote for the Democrats since a lot of Republicans deny climate change is happening and will continue to happen. Yeah, and also uh, I had some funny realizations about politics recently. So this year, 2024, is the 20th anniversary, anniversary of when the Republican Party last won the popular, popular vote. Yeah, 2004, that was the last time. Can you believe that? But there's more. 2004 is the only time in my lifetime that the Republican Party has won the pop popular vote. So before I was born, Republicans won the re popular vote in the 1988 election, and then 2004, and that's it since then. So, yeah, everyone born after 1988 has only seen the Republican Party win the popular vote once, and everyone born after 2004 has never seen the Republican Party win the popular vote. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, and this election has been crazy. And one other historical fact that I forgot to mention in this video, this presidential election is the third presidential election in a row where there's been a woman on the ticket of a major pol political party. Because uh, we had Hillary Clinton running for president, then Kamala Harris as vice president in the next election, and now Kamala's running for president this election. Yeah, so I don't think that's ever happened before. There's been women before who've run for president, but they've been on minor political party tickets. I'm, I'm talking about the major uh, political parties. So, so yeah, yeah, three in a row. So to sum it up, I hope politicians stop lying so much, ex especially about awareness events that are trying to do good. I hope people get out and vote. I did early voting this year, so I already voted in. Yeah, so that's going to be it for this video. And I wore the correct sh shirt. <laughs> so, yeah. Until next video, goodbye.